All right, welcome everybody. Let's talk a little bit about the paced rhythms. So the paced rhythms are kind of unique in that we're going to take this device, a pacemaker, we're going to implant it into the patient, we're going to run some wires into the ventricle or the atria of the patients, <clears throat> and then we're going to tell that device to uh, stimulate, electrically stimulate the, the muscle cells to cause depolarization of muscle tissue and subsequently contraction. So anywhere that there's a pacemaker inside a patient, we're going to be able to see pretty specifically which chamber it's in, whether it's in atrial, in an atrium, or in a ventricle, or in two ventricles. And we're going to be able to determine the type of pacemaker that it is just by taking a look at a few things. All right, so the three pacemakers we're going to look at here are atrial pacemakers, the ventricular pacemakers, and again, sometimes we'll have it in just one chamber, or it may be in both ventricles. You may have both a right and left ventricular uh, device uh, that's going to be uh, causing stimulation. And then last but not least is the AV or atrioventricular sequential pacemaker. So these are going to be the pacemakers that are firing at the atrial level and the ventricular level. And usually the reason for this is because that there's an AV node problem. So the SA node's not working, that's why we got to fire the atria. And the, the AV node is not working, that's why we have to separately fire the ventricles. All right, so let's take a look at what these look like. So an atrial pacemaker is going to be characterized by this spike that takes place. You'll see this very rapid, single moment in time spike that takes place. And immediately following that spike, you'll have what appears to be a pretty normal P wave after that. So anytime there's a single spike that takes place and it's followed by what appears to be a reasonably normal P wave, and that's it, meaning that the rest of the EKG looks normal, the QRS is of normal duration, and the QRS and the T wave are pointing in the same direction, then we call this spike followed by a P wave, an atrial pacemaker. Now, that's about all we can tell from this particular tracing. So the atrial pacemakers, again, look for the spike. It's going to be a real rapid thing that happens at a single moment in time, and it's going to be followed by a P wave, and then the QRS and the T wave must be of normal duration, and they both have to point in the same direction. This is really, really important. All right, so the next one we want to look at is a ventricular pacemaker. Now, in the case of a single ventricular pacing lead, in this case, we don't know whether or not this is in the right or the left ventricle. It is most likely in the right ventricle, but we have absolutely no idea. So <clears throat> a ventricular pacemaker is characterized by the presence of a single moment in time, whoops, a single moment in time line that takes place. I don't know, my pen is writing kind of crooked here. Let's see if we can fix that real quickly. But in any case, this is going to be a single moment in time thing that's taking place, and it's going to be this line right here, all right? This line that's right here, and I don't know why my pen is acting up like that. We'll try to fix that. All right, in any case, this single moment in time line that takes place, and in addition to that, you're going to see that it's followed by this wide, bizarre-looking QRS complex. And this wide, bizarre-looking QRS complex is then going to be followed by a T wave that's pointing in the opposite direction. So it's going to be this spike that takes place. It's going to be a wide QRS complex. And the T wave and the QRS complexes are going to face in opposite directions. So this is called QRS and T wave discordance. The QRS complex is negatively oriented. The T wave is positively oriented. And you'll see that across pretty much the entire tracing. Now, we haven't talked about 12 leads yet, so it doesn't matter what lead you're looking in. It's going to appear the same pretty much in each and every single lead. It's this spike that takes place. It's the wide QRS, and it's followed by a T wave that opposes the QRS force. So QRS is upright. T wave is inverted. If the QRS is negative, the T wave is upright. It's this discordance that takes place. All right, so anytime you see a pacemaker spike, rapid, single moment in time event, followed by a wide QRS and discordance between the QRS and the T wave. This is known as a ventricular pacemaker. All right, so we'll talk a little bit more about this because there's something to do with this frequency range down here at the bottom that we also have to take into consideration, and we'll do that in a different video. For now, just keep in mind that the frequency range means the electrical activity that's allowed to appear on the tracing, and this is going to play a role with our pacemakers in just a little while. I'll mention it in a few slides. 
All right, so the next one we have to look at here is going to be the AV sequential pacemaker. So atrial and then ventricular sequence. So these things are placed in sequence so that we can fire the atria first, give the ventricles a little bit of time. So there's this built-in delay mechanism at the level of the pacemaker because the AV node is no longer working. And we'll be able to see that with these tiny little guys. Now I'm going to go to this lead down here, which is actually lead three. It doesn't matter that we're looking at a 12 lead EKG. I'm just picking lead three because it happens to be um, the lead that we can see this probably best in. So I want you to appreciate that there's this little spike that takes place right here, and it's followed by what appears to be a reasonably normal P wave. Right? Then the next thing that we see is this next event, which is this larger spike, followed by a wide QRS complex and a T wave that opposes the direction of the QRS complex. So it's negatively oriented, it's positively oriented as the T wave. So essentially what we have is this atrial event, it's got a P wave that follows. We have this big spike again, followed by a QRS complex, which is wide, and a T wave, which opposes the force. So an AV sequential pacemaker really puts together both of the findings of the atrial pacemaker, which is a small spike, followed by what appears to be a reasonably normal P wave, and large spike. Remember, tiny little bit of electricity needed to put out the, the uh, depolarization for the tiny little bit of atrial tissue, larger spike for the larger mass of the right and the left ventricles, and these are always followed by wide QRSs and discordance between the QRS and the T wave. So AV sequential pacemaker takes atrial characteristics, the ventricular paste characteristics, it puts them together, and you'll be able to see that on the EKG itself. All right, so let me erase a few things here and we'll point them out again. All right, this little guy right here is the little spike we're talking about. It's this guy that occurs right here. This little spike here is nothing more than the atrial pacemaker that is uh, firing. And then this larger spike that takes place, this guy here is the one that's responsible for ventricular stimulation. And then of course we get this negatively deflected QRS complex and positively deflected T wave. This is the discordance that I was talking about. So I just want you for just a second to think about this. If this is lead two, all right, this is lead two, and we now have a pacemaker, all right, so the ventricles are down here, the atria are up here, and we have a pacemaker that's a ventricular pacemaker, the origin of that stimulus is going to come from down at the level of the ventricles. And as you can imagine, that depolarization is going to take place upwards. So if we have depolarization that results from either a ventricular rhythm or a paced rhythm, that's a ventricular paced rhythm, that depolarization is actually moving away from the positive lead. So in the case of lead two, when we have a ventricular pacemaker, that lead should be a wide QRS complex that is negatively deflected in lead two. It should always be negatively deflected in lead two. And the reason for that is because this motion, this force, is moving away from the positive lead, which is creating a negative deflection. Then we get discordance between QRS and T, and again, we'll talk about that in uh, greater depth in a different video, but know to look for this discordance that takes place. That's kind of an important finding. All right, so the AV sequential pacemaker, there it is. All right, and last but not least, let's take a look at um, an atrial and a ventricular pacemaker, but this is a dual chamber pacemaker. Now, this is a wonderful example because this example is actually a patient that has deceased. This is a patient that uh, I was able to obtain an EKG on uh, in the post-mortem state. So the patient's underlying rhythm here, if you see it, is actually asystole. But this rhythm's really cool because what you can see here is this tiny little spike that occurs tiny little spike that occurs pretty consistently, and that is the atrial piece of it. All right, so that's the atrial piece of it. Then you see these guys here, all right, and these guys here, these two things that are occurring here, are the dual chamber ventricular pacemakers. All right, so these guys are the ventricular guys, and essentially what's happened is there is one little electrode that is in the right ventricle, there is one little electrode that goes to the left ventricle and they fire only about 40 milliseconds apart from one another to stimulate the right and the left ventricle to depolarize. So when we see atrial followed by two 
or if there just happens to be two, for example, we're going to call those a dual chamber pacemaker. And sometimes this is a little hard to see when there's a, a native rhythm underneath here, a, a, the patient's own rhythm under here. So this is kind of a neat way to see this information without actually having any sort of rhythm that's, uh, that's competing for our space here. All right, so that's, that concludes the paced rhythms. All right, so we'll do some practice on these in class, but there's really nothing more and nothing less to these guys. We'll include a little something later when we get to the 12 leads about the uh, frequency response. That was that 0 0.05 to 40 hertz, and we'll talk a little bit more about some tricks that we can do with the LifePak 15 to be able to better visualize paced activity. All right, that's it for now. Stay tuned.